I'm Bernard Frischer, the director of the Institute for Advanced Technology in the Humanities at the University of Virginia, and I'm also the director of the Rome Reborn Project. I'm often asked why this strange nomenclature, Rome Reborn 1.0, 1.1, and 2.0, and there's some good and I think fairly simple reasons for it. Uh, obviously, they indicate different versions of the model, different solutions. Uh, all three uh, versions relate to Rome in the year 320 AD when Constantine the Great was the emperor and Rome was at the peak of its development. So uh, in terms of content, the model is the same, but the technology is different. The goal in Rome Reborn 1.0 was to take 31 or so uh, what we call class one buildings, buildings that uh, we cannot securely identify, locate, and, um, and reconstruct, and contextualize these buildings in an overall city model. The problem is if you don't do that, uh, the individual buildings seem to be uh, floating in a kind of virtual Gobi Desert. Uh, to do that, we thought we would digitize the great physical model of ancient Rome in a museum in Rome. It was created from 1933 to 73, the so-called Plastico di Roma Antica, the physical model of ancient Rome. So that was one of our goals in Rome Reborn 1.0, and we wanted to use the, digi the digital version of that model as a base model into which we could insert our class one models, Colosseum, Roman form, and so on. But once we had done that, being human beings, we weren't satisfied, and we thought, well, uh, we do have uh, all of those, uh, all that context. We have all those thousands of filler buildings making up the city, the kind of buildings we call the class two buildings. Uh, these are buildings we can't securely locate, and we, and we can't identify most of them, and, uh, and we don't really know what they looked like, except in a general way. But we know about them from a lot of ancient Roman sources, especially two uh, building censuses that happen to survive right from our period, the fourth century AD. Hi, I'm Kim Dilla, um, in charge of visualization here at the Institute for Advanced Technology in the Humanities at the University of Virginia. The technology involved in making Rome Reborn 1.0 on the database end of things was Multigen Creator as a modeling package. The textures were rendered using Maxwell and Lightscape and then baked in. Uh, the Class 2 buildings had to be textured manually using Google SketchUp and are quite schematic in nature uh, because there are so many of them. Uh, on the real-time end of things, we used Open Scene Graph with a custom viewer application that interfaced with Google Earth to tie in the documentation spatially to the geo-referenced landmarks. It allowed us to display information related to not only the model, but the history of the monument or the landmark that you were looking at. To run the model, we traveled with a, a shuttle small form vector PC with a NVIDIA 8800 GTX card in it and a quad-core processor Intel. My name is David Kohler. I'm a research scientist at the University of Virginia and also assistant director at the Institute for Advanced Technology in the Humanities. Rome Reborn 1.0 had its origins back in the 1990s, so the rendering technologies that you were used to display the model reflect those 1990 drawbacks in terms of technology. The illumination models, for example, were purely local with no global illumination effects such as shadowing or ambient occlusion. And those effects were taken into account then in Rome Reborn version 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, in Rome Reborn 1.1, we teamed up with IBM and the group that made the cell chipset. And we were given a cell server by IBM. Uh, and we ported over Rome Reborn 1.0 to this new uh, platform. And this gives us even 60 frames per second of output, so it looks, the output looks really smooth at high definition resolution, 1080p. And there's a potential someday of uh, being able to remotely log into the IBM cell and use it as a server on the internet. For Rome Reborn 1.1, we ported the model over to the IBM cell server. Uh, some improvements were made to the lighting model. The baked-in lighting was removed, and uh, we were able to achieve a blazing 60 frames a second. In Rome Reborn 2.0, we were trying to achieve um, even more accuracy and detail, especially with the filler architecture, the class two buildings. In Rome Reborn 2.0, we made several improvements to the model. Firstly, on the database side, we proceduralized all of the class two buildings, the apartment buildings, the temples. Before, they were just textured blocks. Now they have all sorts of uh, really amazing detail that uh, was made possible by the City Engine software. In order to run the model, 
we used Mental Images Reality Server software, which for the first time allows the model to be run interactively over the internet using an image-based lighting model from HDR image of the sky of Rome. By partnering with Mental Images of Berlin, we were able to publish Rome Reborn 2.0 to the internet and to do it with be the beautiful uh, illumination software that Mental Images is famous for. So uh, with Rome Reborn 2.0, we really feel we're coming much closer to the original dream of the Rome Reborn project, which is to publish models illustrating the urban history of Rome in all periods, not just 320 AD, but in all periods, to the internet so, so that it can be easily used by scholars and students and the general public around the world. Rome Reborn 2.0 uses a remote rendering approach to disseminate the model across the internet. And we use this approach in order to protect the intellectual property of the model. This is a very sensitive issue to creators of cultural heritage 3D content, whether we're scanning statues overseas or developing a large city model like the Rome Reborn project. In order to protect the 3D geometry of the model from theft or misuse, we distribute only images to the end user on their local PC with a remote render server generating images from the actual geometry in a secured central location. Going forward with the Rome Reborn project, there's a lot of very interesting technical questions as well as scholarly questions. Just the magnitude of this model presents a number of new technical challenges with 7,000 buildings and perhaps the largest urban model ever constructed uh, addressing rendering issues and display issues such as level of detail and occlusion calling. We're really testing those state-of-the-art algorithms uh, as, as well as any model can. So we need to develop further innovations in order to just allow that full level of detail, complete interiors for 7,000 buildings arrayed in a city model. How do you display that in an interactive way at 30 hertz or 60 frames per second? I'm, I'm often asked now that we've finished Rome Reborn uh, 2.0, where do we go next? Well, first of all, there are many more years uh, in Rome's urban development to illustrate through modeling. We really want to start from the first settlement in the Bronze Age, roughly 1000 BC, and go down all the way to the uh, depopulation of the city in the early Middle Ages, roughly 550 AD. How are we going to do that? Well, we've learned our lesson. We can't do it alone. We can't do it as a small group of scholars and technologists invited to collaborate uh, with us. We need to open this up to the scholars of the world to contribute to as a collaborative research project, a social research project. And that's what we plan to do by starting the world's first online peer-reviewed scholarly journal called SAVE, S-A-V-E, -E, Serving and Archiving Virtual Environments. This is a research project we're currently investigating at the University of Virginia and hope to address uh, cultural heritage models such as statues, fragmented archaeological artifacts, as well as city models such as Rome, and put them together into a cohesive central resource that allows scholars to contribute, share, and analyze that collection of 3D models. Rome was our laboratory, and now we want to share what we've learned through the project with scholars all around the world.